Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Junxiang from Emory University. So I'm, I'm honored to be here to present our paper, an invertible graph diffusion new network for source localization. So this work is done by collaborators from Emory University and Tianjin University. Um, so this is the outline of my presentation. First, I will give some background knowledge of the source localization problem. Then I will formulate this problem in a mathematical formulation. Next, we will present the, our method to solve the source localization problem. And finally, extensive express, uh, experiment will be conducted to uh, demonstrate the effectiveness of our proposed method. So let's get started. So as we all know, as we all know that a graph are universal uh, structures that they have been applied in many applications. For example, in social networks, graph models can be utilized to predict whether two users share a connection. In the biological domain, uh, the graph models can be utilized to predict a protein-protein interaction, which is, will be useful for drug development. And in the computer science domain, if we do malware detection, we can utilize graph for, for this task. Um, I think, yeah, you muted yourself. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure why I'm I'm not, I'm mute. <laughs> so uh, I will start uh, I will start from from scratch again. Um, oh, we we were hearing you just fine. Don't worry. Um, um, so, yeah, I'm not sure why during my presentation I'm mute. So I'm not sure where should I start. Or no, no, we, we, we could hear you. We, we, uh, we were uh, able to hear this slide as well. So you can go to the okay. next. Okay. Yeah, okay, oh, great. So, okay, uh, so let me continue my presentation. Um, as a fundamental, and a fundamental learning, pro learning task, graph diffusion aims to predict the future uh, cascade patterns given some source nodes. While at a, as an inverse process, Source localization aims to detect source nodes given their uh, future cascade patterns. So here I give you an example of the source localization and the graph diffusion. So you can see that from the figure, uh, from the figure from from left to right, we give the we give the uh, process of the of the graph diffusion. Sorry. So uh, given the source node C, after three ten steps, actually we can get the uh, graph cascade pattern B, C, D, and E. And for the source localization, we aim to detect source C given the cascade pattern B, C, D, and E. So this is the definition of the graph diffusion and the source localization. So um, existing source localization models actually are traditional prescribed methods which based on a predefined rules, such as uh, distance measures and uh, heuristics. And these rules are usually tailored or specialized for specific applications. Here is the problem. If we do not know any prior knowledge on graph diffusion, these rules cannot or uh, may not work in this case. So as an alternative, we consider graph neural networks or GNNs uh, to be as uh, to be an uh, alternative to the pretty traditional prescribed methods because GN has two advantages. Firstly, GN can effectively learn the node representation by considering their network information and the neighbor information. Secondly, uh, GN can learn the rules from the data directly instead, instead of prescribed rules, and it can be trained in the end -end, in the end-to-end -end fashion. So because of these, uh, these two advantages, we can apply GN in the source localization problem. And one may ask, what would be the challenges if, if you apply the GN in, into this problem? And I has, I, here is the major two challenges of the GN. Uh, the first challenge is the difficulty to leverage knowledge in graph diffusion models. So I'll give it, to illustrate the point, I'll give you an example here. So you can see that start from uh, node B, and a node C, right? We can both generate the same 
uh, cascade pattern, B, C, D, and E. So this means that the source localization problem is ill posed, right? Uh, but if we can utilize knowledge from the graph diffusion model, it, is, it, it will help us to improve the prediction of the source localization. So the question is how to inject such prior knowledge from graph diffusion models. It is very difficult to define handcraft rules to achieve this goal because a uh, graph diffusion process and the uh, source localization process are opposite. The second challenge is the difficulty to ensure the val validity of the inferred sources. So we have noticed that graph sources usually uh, follow some valid graph cascade pattern. For example, uh, in the social network, uh, we observe that some uh, source may be connected or in the IoT network, in, in some restricted regions, the source may be very dense in such regions. Uh, actually, we can, we can design some activation layers to uh, impose the validity constraint in, in, into our model. But these, uh, these activation layers actually focus on individual nodes while the general validity constraint requires projection of multiple nodes. So that's the second challenge. So before we move to our um, framework part, we need to formal, formulate this problem in a mathematic formulation. And uh, here we given, we given a node G and we assume that the graphs diffusion model theta here is known, where the theta maps from X, which is the source factor to Y, which is the diffusion matter. So the goal of the source localization is to uh, design the inverse of the theta, which starts from y to x. And it also subject to a uh, constraint uh, psi x, or uh, phi x equals zero. So phi is a validity constraint. Now uh, let's move to the, our framework part. Now we can, we propose a uh, IVGD, a model for source localization, uh, which is short for invertible validity aware graph diffusion. Our proposed IVGD framework consists of two modules. In the first module is the invertible graph residual net, which, uh, which reverses the graph diffusion model by formulating the graph residual net. And then we can design some uh, validity aware layers to which satisfy uh, the validity constraint. And such layers encode the validity constraints into the problem by the unroll optimization techniques. So, so let's look at what the both the modules in detail. So suppose we have a graph diffusion model, and such graph diffusion model usually consists of two two parts. One is feature, feature construction, and another is and the other is labor propagation. So in order to make it invertible, we can add some residual connection. And this, this is our invertible graph residual nets. So given this invertible graph residual nets, we can give the estimation of, this, uh, of the uh, source factor by the uh, following algorithm. So the, this algorithm gave the estimation of the source and uh, it consists of two loops. For the first loop, uh, it, it can obtain the inverse of the labor propagation. And for a second loop, it can give the inverse of the feature construction. And these loops can be achieved by the, fit, uh, by the fixed point iteration. And then my one, my one may ask, uh, how to ensure the invertibility of the graph residual net? Uh, we can ask, answer this question both in theoretically and practically. For the perspective of theory, we, can, we give the mild condition if the Lipschitz constant of the F and the G is smaller than one, then we can ensure that the uh, graph residual net is, is uh, invertible. Also, we can, we can give, uh, we can provide some practical uh, discussion on how to make it in order to make it invertible in order to satisfy the condition in, in theory. Uh, due to time limit, I won't go into detail. If you're interested in this part, you can look into my paper. The next module is validity aware layers. So we have give the we have obtained the estimation of a source from the invertible graph invertible graph residual net, and we pass it into an error connect, correction module to make it more accurate. Now the question is how to ensure the validity validity constraint. 
in order to achieve this goal, actually, we need to solve the, the following uh, optimization problem, where the objective is a logs function and is subject to two constraints. One, two constraints. And the one is the, um, is the one is the, uh, the result we obtain from the graph residual net. And the second is the validity constraint. So you may observe that there is a potential conflict between these two constraints. So in order to uh, address this issue, we actually uh, relax the, the, this uh, problem into the equation two, where we impose the least square loss on, on the objective. Now the task is to design some activation layers to address equation two. Um, inspired by the unroll optimization technique, actually we can unload equation two into a new net where the layer designs as equation three. So e each layer actually the, it is an optimization problem. So the, the minimizer of this optimization problem is an output. Uh, but, but the equation three is still a constraint optimization problem. So we need to solve it by the argumented like ranger method. So in order, in, in, in order to do so, we, we formulate argumented like ranger function as follows. So uh, we need to um, solve the big H, the big H here. Uh, but the big H is still a non-convex because the constraint, the validity constraint may be non-convex. So it makes the all whole objective non-convex. To in order to address this issue, actually we uh, utilize the linearization technique to transform the non-convex big H to the convex small H, and then we can have the final formulation of the validity aware layers. And uh, usually for a uh, square loss, if the loss function R is a square loss, then this uh, optimization problem has a closed form solution, which is very convenient to solve. Okay, now let's look, look at the experiment part. So we have tested our IG, IVGD method on nice real data sets. So the, this table actually shows a summary of the, uh, the data sets. And uh, for most data sets, we generate, we generate the diffusions as follows. First, we select 10% node as a source node randomly. And then this diffusion was repeated 60 times. And uh, the, num the ratio of the training and test, test set was set to eight to two. And for some data sets, such as memory tracker and the dig, they actually provide the source vector and the diffusion vector vectors. When it comes to the comparison methods, we choose two uh, prescribed methods and one GN-based method. And these are state of methods in the source localization. For the matrix, actually we utilize five matrices, which are uh, accuracy, precision, recall, F score and the uh, error on the ROC curve, which is AUC. For the parameter setting, actually uh, we set the two layer MLP for the feature construction FW and the uh, IC model, which is independent cascade model for the propagation function G. And uh, for the uh, validity aware, sorry, for the validity constraint, we actually know the numbers of source node in advance. So basically, this constraint can be achieved by the AR, AR0 norm, but the, AR, the AR0 norm is non differentiable. Thus, we can relax to the L1 norm. Now, let's look at experiment results. First, you can see that the experiment on the multiple data set show that our proposed IVGD is the most, uh, have the most best performance. Next, when we plot the uh, ROC curve, you can see that. The ROC, the, the ROC of our proposed IVGD is uh, actually covers most uh, covers all comparison methods. This means that the AOCs of our proposed uh, IVGD are the best. Next, we have we show the results for ablation study, and uh, you can see that uh, if one of the modules in our uh, IVGD was removed actually the performance dropped significantly. This means that all the uh, components of our, all the modules in our proposed IVGD are necessary to the outstanding performance of our, our, our proposed model. Next, we have uh, investigated the, our model with, to, with regard to two factors, hidden, hidden units and the layers. And the, the, these 
plots uh, demonstrate that uh, more hidden units and uh, layers lead to in, lead to bad performance in general, with a few with several exceptions. With several exceptions exist. Uh, we also demonstrated the running time for multiple data sets. So you can see that for the first three data sets, actually the L LPSI is the, more is the most efficient one. But for the large scale networks or data sets, uh, our proposed IBGD is the most efficient. So in this case, our IBGD has very, very great uh, scalability. Finally, we uh, we make some we will make some visualization of post uh, IVGD in comparison with uh, or compare or baselines. So you can see that on the two data sets shown here, our prediction actually is identical to the two sources. This means that we can we can have a, a perfect uh, prediction on the source localization. Uh, so let me summary my presentation. So in this work, uh, we design a generic hand-to-hand -hand framework for the source localization problem. And we develop an invertible graph diffusion model by, by considering the prior knowledge on the graph diffusion models. And we also propose efficient validity aware layers to maintain the validity constraint of the graph source. And finally, multiple data sets have been demonstrated, uh, have, have been utilized to demonstrate the performance of post IVG model which show that our model is very effective, very efficient, and very robust. So we have uh, published our code in the GitHub, and here's the link and the QR code. So uh, if you're interested in our work, feel free to contact me, and, uh, uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions. So thank you so much for attention to my work. Uh, thank you, uh, Jun Zeng. Uh, yes. how, how do I say your name, uh, Jun Zeng? Sorry? Uh, how do I say your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can call me Will. Yeah. My English okay. name, Will. Yeah. Okay. Will. Um, so, do people have any questions about this presentation? Uh, if people do not have any questions, I can ask, ask uh, one of my own. Um, so, one point you raised is that uh, uh, this model works very well if you know the diffusion model, uh, or sorry, th this, uh, this source local localization method works well if you know the diffusion model. Uh, the question I have though is, um, in many realistic scenarios, um, we might not know the diffusion model. You know, you might only have uh, a couple of malware infections, or you might only have a couple, uh, uh, you know, D disease infections of a particular disease, uh, giving you very limited knowledge about how it might spread. Um, so how do you address that potential issue? Okay, um, I think that's a very, very great question because yeah, uh, so compared with source localization, so graph diffusion domain actually has, uh, are very well developed. So in this case, we can first portray a graph diffusion model and usually this graph diffusion model work very well. And then we can utilize the prior knowledge for the pre-trained graph diffusion model for the source localization. So this is very, uh, this is I, I think the potential one. We can apply our method into the, so given the pre-trained uh, graph diffusion models, then we can apply our source localization method to, to this problem. And I think that's very, uh, this, this is one potential solution to your question. And also I think um, one other, so I just move a little forward from my presentation. So if you would not know actually the graph diffusion model, we can treat it as a black box model. Maybe we can also uh, devise some surrogate model to, to, for source localization. That, it, that is maybe one, potentially uh, maybe one of my uh, future work. Yes. Thank you. Um, one more question was about the uh, RFC curve. Um, yes. So the, the only question I had there was uh, that you show some lines that are below the random guess line, that the, the 45 degree line, um, yeah. which is to say that for GNSI, if you predict whatever GNSI, uh, if you predict what GNSI does not choose, you would have a positive AUC. Uh, what, how, how does one make sense of that? I mean, it sounds like GN, GNSI is basically doing the opposite of making a good prediction. 
you mean the G the the GCN the the G the GCNSI uh works poorly in this case, right? Um yeah. yes, uh, this is very I think this is a very good question because when I, when I conduct a method and compare it with a GCNSI, actually you can see that the if you look at the 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 the, the matrix here, actually it has a a, a fine uh, ACC, but but it's PR and RE very low. So basically cannot um, when we actually done our experiments, so the GCNSI is very uh, subject, very sensitive to the threshold, right? But basically, if we uh, move the threshold a little bit, then the, maybe the prediction is is actually uh, changed significantly. So basically, this means that the uh, the GCNSI is very sensitive to the threshold. So that's why I think when we plot the IOC curve, the, our, the AOC is very low in this case. Yes, I see. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. With that, I think we're out of time. But uh, uh, thank you again for your for your presentation. Thank you, Thank you so much, session chair.